Hey there, it's Kevin. It's time for us to talk about your backups. You don't have backups. Some of you don't have backups. You should have backups. Pretty much of everything. Wedding pictures, child room reveal, SQL Server databases. Um, probably 50% of the clients that I see uh, health check information on don't have database backups or they do but they're just kind of hit and miss oh we only need this database we don't need these others and that's usually not right um, in disaster you're gonna wish you had everything um, I know because I see it all the time this is what I do for a living is stabilize your servers reliability availability performance it's our new tagline I like it because the acronym is RAP and that's fun um, so 50% of you don't have backups that are, are reliable and consistent and can rebuild a machine from. Okay, we all know backups are, are not always great. Of the 50% that are taking, roughly 95% of you are not testing those backups by doing a restore. So you don't know if you have backups. Jeff Hyten, I think, said you know something along the lines of, if you're not testing your backups, you don't have a disaster recovery plan, you have a disaster recovery hope. And he's right. Um, if you never test your DR plan, you have a bunch of great ideas on paper or in your head. Uh, so enough beating you up. Let me show you how easy this is to do with the, uh, the wonderful and amazing community tools called DBA Tools. DBAtools.io. Chrissy, Rob, Jess, some other people whose names I've forgotten. They put thousands and thousands of hours into making these simple things that are thousands of lines of PowerShell code, and you need to know a few. So I'm going to show you. We uh, we should be showing my screen here, recording my screen. I certainly hope we are, because I don't want to redo this. Um, so there's my SQL Server right there. It's just on my local laptop. There's nothing exciting here. I've got a generic DBA database that has tools and maybe some logging stuff in it. And I've got the Stack Overflow database as well. I'm not going to back that up right now. I can and will, but in the very first part of this demo, I want you to see. I don't want you to see all that yet. There. Um, because of the new Microsoft stuff with the way they're doing their client, you know, if you don't check the trusted connection box and deal with certificates and all that when you're connecting, it yells at you. This, thanks, Jeff Rush. I call him Jeffer because Jeff R. Um, that helped me get past this nonsense. So I literally have one row of code, one line of code. This is the part that comes from the DBA tools module, which I've pre-installed. It's a one-time thing. Go do it. Uh, and I can run this from anywhere. The SQL instance that I'm going to do this against, the dash one is in case I have more than that many Dell Precision 7770s. It matches my instance name on SQL Server, so duh. And I want to do this for just the database DBA, which is there, because it's going to go really fast. All right, so I'm going to press F5. Now I'm going to do it on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six seconds. Here's what it did. It went into the backup history, and this is the simplest form of it. You can make all kinds of crazy adjustments to it and go to URLs and restore from, you know, grow on this box and all that, and I'll deal with that in a second. The restore was a success. Fantastic. We wanted that. It also ran dbcc check db to look for corruption. Success. How long did it take to do the restore? Three seconds. Basically instant for the, the check db because there's almost no data in that database. The fact that it went so fast is just because it's a tiny database. And then it shows you, hey, look, I did the full and the transaction and the transaction log and the transaction. By default, it went into the backup history, looked at the files, compared them, and made an entire restore database, restore long structure thing behind the scenes to bring it to the most current point in time that it could, or restore the most recent transaction log, so not point in time technically. Um, I guess technically it is because it's right up to the end of that last TRM file, whatever. It did all that for me with one line of code. If you don't know DBA tools, hi Chrissy, you're going to love this. If you're not familiar with DBA tools, please take the time. There's a book, uh, DBA tools in a month of lunches. The whole thing is open source. It's free. There's 600 commands to make your life better. Here's the fun part. I'm going to take this bit out and run this thing again. Yeah, I know. I should have checked the box already. So 
it's going to go through the exact same gyrations and it's skipping the system databases. But notice over here, it's restoring these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ref refresh this and show you while I can. This is what's actually being restored. I'm on the same instance that I backed up from. So I've got a Stack Overflow database and I'm restoring a Stack Overflow database and it's got a prefix in there, which you can change. If, this thing's got a lot of parameters you can play around with. You can change that. So it's going to restore it as something non-destructive. If the only box you have is production, you can still do this if you have this space because it is restoring a full copy. It's going to restore it. It's going to do check DB. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the video until that's done because that's going to take a little while. So Stack Overflow Data Dump is a big database. Uh, this is one of the bigger versions of it. So we'll come back. That's going to disappear because it's going to automatically drop itself. So it does a restore. Check DB, drop, clean everything up, and move on. Okay, we're back. As you can see, this thing is humming right along. It's about 97% on the restore. Um, unless this has the demo gremlins that tend to jump in, to, uh, it should jump right into the check DB after this. Once it's done, done. Transaction log, transaction log, transaction log. There they go, there they go. <laughs> Now, if we refresh the database, it's still there and it's been brought online. So with recovery, if you're doing manual things, it's still running the script. That's the CheckDB portion. So it's doing that. I honestly don't know how long that takes. I, I of course, tested this, but I don't remember how long it was. So I'll pause and come back. And we're back. As you can see, the database is still there. PowerShell is done. Let's walk through what we did here. There's the last call of it. Master database is skipped because this skips system database is dead by default. And don't really want those trying to be test restored every day. Back them up so you know you can, especially MSDB if you want to keep your jobs. Anyway, model, whoops, model database, MSDB. Uh, very quick numbers on the stack over, not very quick, but somewhat quick. Stack overflow. Let's see, eight minutes to restore, 11 minutes to run check DB, and DBCC check DB result was a success. That was the restore. That's the meat right there. That's what you want. And then that's all the stuff we talked about a minute ago. Uh, DBA, it did the check DB in zero seconds, three seconds. So of my two databases, I now know that two databases can be restored, and there's no corruption in them that's sneaking in to cause me headaches later. Um, a good thing that I almost forgot to tell you about, if you've got a mishmash of SQL servers from 2014 to 2019, 2022, whatever, set up a test box with a lot of disk space that nobody uses and run this from there where it goes to uh, the, the paths where the backups are or UNC file share, wherever you're doing your backups, pulls those across. And I, I said earlier that it reads backup history in the files. I think it probably, I misspoke, it's probably just recursing through the file directory that you give it to go, what did I find and what can I restore and let me build a thing from here and then it will restore it to that dev box, test box, whatever you want to call it. Restore it, check it, delete it, one after the other and you can pull all your instances in. And the reason I say build this up as a big SQL 2022 or something that matches the highest version of SQL Server you've got in production. I don't mean addition, I mean version. That's the 2014, the 2019, whatever. So if you've got 2019 CU 17, you need at least that as your destination or just at some point that it doesn't go backwards enough to work. CUs might not really be in play as much as they used to, but you can pull a 2014 or 2012 or whatever over to a 2022. It'll restore, it'll just also upgrade, but you don't care because that database is going to go away. If you're not doing this in some capacity at some time interval of, of a real frequency that matters and something's going on with your backups where your, your, your BAK files are corrupting because there's a disk problem or something like that, you don't really want to find that out when the system's down and everybody's screaming at you in your cube or in your Zoom meeting or your Slack or whatever. So please do this. Set it up. Automate it. Be done with it. You don't... I don't think, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I don't think you need a production license to do this. The restore, no, but the check DB, I don't believe I've heard varying opinions on that. I haven't told you everything about this because that's not the whole point. Talk to me in the comments. Tell me why this doesn't work for you, what you do that's better, what you like. 
it's great. That works too. I don't mind compliments. Um, so that's it. Simple. Literally one line of actual code if I will learn how to work a mouse can save your job if you're a DBA. Do this. You can roll your own code to do it, but why? That's hours and hours and hours of work and testing. Test this. It goes fast. I use this in production at a bunch of clients. All right, that's enough of that. I'm past my 10 minutes. Uh, this meeting or this video is not sponsored by SQL Saturday Austin from 2019, but it was a fun event to go to. Bye.